In the experiment we just did, we noticed a change at the surface of the bromothymol blue solution. We saw a little yellow layer forming, and later that yellow took over the whole cup. What does that mean? What does bromothymol blue indicate? I'm going to put on my goggles again to show you a quick demonstration. I'm going to take a known acid, vinegar, like we used before, and add a tiny bit to this cup of bromothymol blue solution. You can see it changing already. If I give it a little swirl, you can see that the color change is completely different, and now I have a yellow liquid. This shows the presence of an acid. Well, what does that mean for our experiment? That means at the surface of the bromothymol blue, we saw that yellow layer indicating the presence of an acid, but I didn't add the vinegar to the cup. What did I add? I put these two materials together, baking soda and vinegar, in the paper cup with the fish on it. When you mix baking soda and vinegar together, you create a carbon dioxide gas. So the cup in our experiment was filled with carbon dioxide gas. I was very careful not to spill any liquid. But that gas is interacting at the surface of the bromothymol blue solution and causing a change. It turns out the carbon dioxide gas plus water make a weak acid, carbonic acid. And the bromothymol blue is indicating that change, turning yellow at the surface first. That's exactly what's happening in our oceans. The change is occurring at the surface. We're adding more carbon dioxide to our atmosphere through the burning of fossil fuels and through land use changes like deforestation. And that added carbon dioxide in our atmosphere is changing the ocean. It diffuses into the ocean just the way it diffused into the bromothymol blue, and it's making the oceans more acidic. We have a great data set that has been collected at Mauna Loa. This is called the Keeling Curve, and you can see the atmospheric levels of carbon dioxide have been going steadily upwards ever since he started taking this data in the 1950s. As we have added carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, it is diffusing into the ocean. It also diffuses from the ocean back into the atmosphere. Diffusion goes both ways at the ocean-atmosphere interface. In pre-industrial times, that was balanced. But right now, we're adding two extra gigatons of atmospheric carbon dioxide into the ocean every year. And so we're not in balance anymore. And so the oceans are becoming more acidified. A lot of people think, what does that mean, ocean acidification? It must mean that we're making the ocean so acidic that it's dissolving the shells of these organisms. That's actually a misconception. The ocean has only changed since industrial, pre-industrial times from a pH of 8.2 to a pH of 8.1. Both of those are considered basic. However, a change of 0.1 on the pH scale means that the oceans are actually 30% more acidic than they were before industrial times. The more acidic ocean means that less carbonate ion is available for these organisms to build their shells. So they aren't dissolving, they just don't have the building blocks available to them as the ocean becomes more acidic. What are the long-term effects? Well, we know for certain that these organisms who are near the bottom of the food chain are certainly going to affect the food web in the ocean. Many of us depend on that food web as well if we eat seafood. And coral reefs are also affected by this. So we don't know the long-term effects of ocean acidification, but our oceans are changing, and they're changing because the atmosphere is changing.